Well, welcome, true believers! Brownie points, whoever can remember where that uh, phrase was memorialized. Welcome to our latest Emperor of the Fading Suns live stream. This time we're looking at the new tutorial because the game is really, really close to being released. Or the patch, I should say. The game's been out there for 25 years. I mean, can't get any closer to being released than that. In this case, however, we've got the 25th anniversary patch. And I actually have the version of the patch that we hope will be the ones that, the one that will soon be in your happy hands. So that is what we are testing out today, the final gold candidate. Barring some surprise major bugs, we'll be getting it out to you this fall. And uh, we're looking forward to you all enjoying this. So with most games, you need a tutorial. So we're going to have a tutorial. I'm hoping to ship it as a saved game. So you just click on it and get right into it. Load saved game tutorial. Um, but uh, today we're going to do it as a start new. We're going to have options for both within uh, whatever PDF we make available. Hey, Daniel Fisher. Woo! Yes, good to have you here, Nature Boy Daniel Fisher. Looking forward to uh, this stream today. Any comments or questions? Uh, glad to hear them. I believe Daniel's had a chance to get his hands on this version of the uh, patch already and has had fun hammering on it. So, yeah, you can make some comments here. I'll be uh, releasing testers from the NDA in the not too distant future. So yeah, if I've already talked about it here, you can talk more about it here. And I appreciate not only all the testers' diligence on pounding away and finding bugs. There were never any bugs, just uh, unintended consequences. Uh, but also their adherence to the NDA. They've been very good about not leaking this stuff out. So much appreciated. And actually, let's show you something. So yeah, the credits. Um, so... And, and still available in game and hobby stores everywhere, though now we have the fourth edition with pen, paper, and a 20-sided die. Yep. But uh, it'll show you some of the credits since uh, the original team is obviously key to this. Uh, yep, Ed Pike was the original lead dude on Emperor of the Fading Suns. Ken Leitner took it over near the end, our head of coding. All of us dudes worked on it at some point. Uh, Daniel Fisher says just download and set up the latest version so we can play today. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Illustrations, John Bridges. John Bridges had a great career in the game industry. He now draws gods all day long for iRes Studios. Talk about a, a great gig. A lot of good folks worked on this. Early motion video. Yeah, we were doing this motion video in 95, 94, 95. So, unbelievable. And of course, you all love that music that you're hearing now. Wait, desktop audio is really loud. Can you even hear me? Let me fix something really quick. Be right back. Well, now you can see me. All right. So apparently the volume was not as bad as I feared. Funny enough, for the past couple decades, every time I visit old bookstores, I check that in EFF source books. Excellent. Glad you enjoyed. Yeah, some good books. Now there are new ones. All right, so we're seeing the original credits going and all the original special thanks. And wonderful people. Uh, and here's the credits for the Virgin 1.5 patch. Matt Kaspermeyer has done great work on it. Sandro Dorogov, Boris, a great team. Oh yeah, that primary patch producer and alliteration advocate. Yep, Nikolai doing... Hey! Apparently we don't have so much space, I'm gonna have to limit these. Hey, bug! Bug discovered. Practically perfect patch play testers. Thank you all our practically perfect patch play testers, including pancakes. Interesting, some font issues gonna have to look at with that. Yeah, there's some great folks who have given great feedback over the years. Todd Calvin, Tom Chick, Michael Eli, Richard Wine, and the whole God team, including Zeus. All right. So, yes, there are EFS 1.5 patch credits that will be included. Hey, EBM, hello. Also gathering all those old and new Fading Suns books. 
Glad you got them all. <laughs> Gotta get the alliterations. Exactly. So any patch, any folks who worked on the patch, you're on this and don't see themselves credited. Let us know. Check the credits when you play the game. When you test the game, they're not playing. They're testing. All right. So I have a whole um, tutorial set up. I'm going to read through it and we're going to catch any of the mistakes I've done in it. I don't know if we'll do the whole thing. I'm going to try and be done at three. Uh, and the tutorial's got lots of stuff in it because as you, those of you who played EFS know, there's a lot to Emperor of the Fading Suns. So let's begin. And I love this because we explained the user interface before. I always thought this was overkill. But then I did an in-person test with the tutorial, handed off to folks without that user interface ex explanation. And it goes, user interface. For the purpose of this tutorial, L click means click with the left mouse button. R click means click with the right button. D click means rapidly double click with the left mouse button. And I handed this off to folks without that explanation and they did not know what L click, R click and D click meant. And these were gamers, obviously console gamers, but gamers nonetheless. So yes, we are including that again in the tutorial. R click, L click, D click. Most of the commands in the game offer hotkeys. And one of the letters in a menu option is highlighted. That key selects that item and we highlight those things. Anyway, tutorial quick start. Welcome to the Fading Suns. This tutorial walks you through some of the basic gameplay to fulfill your quest to become emperor. This tutorial should not be used as a strategy guide. And you can use the tutorial save game that comes with the enhanced version of the game. I've got a special place where they would start if they did. Start a new game. At the main menu, select Start New. All right, we select Start New. On the next screen, select Historical. Then select Play on the... No, we didn't have to select Play. Let me change it. That's what it used to. Now you just click Historical, and it goes right to it. So let me change that. In fact, I didn't realize these buttons are only needed if you haven't selected one of these. So... Hey, hey, caught one comment already. Select historical. Oh, that's right. I've got it defaulted for all AI, so I do need to leave that in. Oh, my own bug here. Ah, because you see right now, all of the houses have AI. That's because I've got that set as the default. When it comes, Lee Halan will be Default. Wow, that's a fix that actually probably needs to be in the game. So maybe I do need a new version of this that includes that. I'm glad I'm testing this today. Maybe I set that up in mine. I'm not sure. All right, sorry. Taking notes on bugs today. Uh, start with Lee Halan selected. And check credit fonts. All right. Interesting. Yep, no brains to be found. You're right, EBM. Certainly not here in this household today. All right. So, Lee Halan is selected. So, Lee Halan will be the default when we do this. Uh, in future games, once you understand the basics, you can select different houses to play. Increase the difficulty and customize the play environment. All these options are covered in the main manual. The default house is Lee Halan, and the default difficulty is Beginner. So now I would click play and we jump right into this. I'm actually going to, well, actually, I guess I need to show those um, tutorial screens again, make sure they're all accurate. I've been going through them, but I need to dig into them again. So you're going to get to see the tutorial screens as well. So let's just go ahead and click play. All right. When it's a human's player's turn, the announcement screen appears with the current date, AD 4956, and house whose turn it is. Chi Kao of House Li Halan's turn. Since you are currently the only human-controlled player house in the game, simply click on the OK button to begin your first turn. And we're going to get these! My lord, become emperor. You must first be elected regent. At that point, declare yourself emperor. If you manage to maintain that position for 10 years, the other royal houses will submit to your rule. However, should all five of your nobles die, of our nobles die, our house will become extinct. All right, we will not be turning off the tutorial. We'll be reading through these, making sure everything's good. All right, let's be Chikao. Advise their message. Your advisor will give valuable information throughout the game. In this case, he's advising you to gain the regency, then attempt to declare yourself emperor. You'll be eliminated from play whenever all five of your noble units are eliminated, or if another house leader becomes emperor. When you're finished reading the messages, click the OK button. Ah, uh, we moved ahead of the tutorial. Uh, Jason! Hey, only a human brain option. No Boric's or children brain players for now. 
Yeah! Hmm, I've never done the anatomy lesson on the Vorox. wonder if their brain has extra medulla oblongata. Alright, choose portrait. We will be Chikao. We'll go with the name Chikao. Chikao. Put the mouse cursor over the box and change the character's name. I'll click on the box and type in a new name. There is a limit to its length. When finished, click the OK button. We will keep that name. Trait screen. View your house's default traits by passing your mouse over the selection button. So let's see. Oh, yes. Do good works. Get higher loyalty. Increase loyalty to me. And we got really loyal folks to be a friend of the church. Ancient documentarian. We also got some bad things. Disdains trade an enemy in the league. For purposes of the tutorial, accept the defaults by L-clicking on the OK button. Technological development and the process of research. Well-strategized research. That should be hyphenated. Well-strategized. Well-strategized with a hyphen. I don't think that fix will be made for the 1.5 patch. Sorry, folks. Well, strategized research is a critical aspect of success for your house in the long term. From designing more highly advanced units to creating a cure for the plague, technology will greatly help you in your quest to become emperor. From this tech screen, you can 1. Allocate your labs in research or different of different technologies. 2. By selecting the database button, you can strike technologies that are no longer useful, freeing up research points for more important final projects. Remember, be careful with technologies that have been prescribed by the church, or you may end up facing the Holy Inquisition. I did not expect that. All right, you can count how many uh, Inquisition jokes get made throughout this. I'm glad this isn't a drinking game. All right, so technology screen. The next screen is research screen. Use it to tell the scientists in your lab what to research. Uh, next, since I was Lee Halan, Begins with three documentarium traits. The trait screen. You begin the game with many technologies from which to choose. Names in blue are category headers. That's these. Names in red have been declared illegal by the church, but you could research them anyway. Nothing in red yet. L click on the database button to see the technologies that you already possess. From there, L click on exit to return. So let's go to database. Uh huh. We have hospitals, pharmaceuticals, energy, etc., etc. Exit. Oh, the archive, of course, gets you all that cool writing. Mega chassis. I myself have seen the skeleton of one of these great automata, automata preserved in the great cathedral at Demole, intact save for the slag marks inflicted by the dire wolf that laid it low. What a fearful thrill to see the great metal frame stretching up and up nigh into the dome of the nave to touch fearfully the great block of the motor, formerly a cauldron of animating hell flame, to hear faintly the creak of the cables and certain steel cylinders as if the specter of the fallen beast yet moaned for life. This technology is known. All right, anyway. So we will exit this and we will research. Uh, I'll click once on electron microscopes. The text box in the lower right corner tells you what researching electron microscopes will let you research next. I'll click on the archive button to read spiritual warnings about electron microscopes. I'll click on the closed bookmark on the lower right corner to get back to the research screen. All right, so I'll click on the archive button. Now let's get reading warnings about electron microscope. Ooh, I love the drawings. What is he seeing? What a horror lurk. Ah, those faceless merchants can get stuffed. If you remember, the tutorial used to actually call for you to attack the Agora. Not going to do that in this version of the tutorial. Electron microscopes. I've stared into the face of the pan creator. Through the agency of this wondrous lens, I've been blessed with sight beyond sight. I've seen planets of sourceless light whirling through radiant planes and inscribing Kabbalistic ellipses. Ellipses. And I've heard the music of the spheres. Truly, I have ear that the pan creator sees among us and amid us, and within us, and through us, not merely spiritually, as the pendants of the Orthodox would have the lumpen believe, but tangibly embodied, and thus continuously incarnate. Revela revelation of Father Baella, Baelia Vostok, one week before being denounced for heresy, tried before the Vestite Inquisitorial Court, and sentenced to the stake. We can research this technology. Alright. I'll click on research tech, yes to accept. And we get an announcement. The map in the current left, upper left corner shows you where the current lab is. Sorry, I didn't look at that. Each lab has its own research screen and each can be given a different technology to research. All right. And if we're actually beginning with the save game tutorial, 
this is kind of where we'll be starting to get the messages and the tech stuff and all. All right. So, moving your units. To move a unit, right click on the unit you wish to move to select it. Left click on the hex to which you want the unit to move. This will produce a line of green dots on the terrain map showing the movement course for your chosen unit, followed by a green X marking the unit's final destination. Red dots and Xs indicate that the unit does not have the required number of movement points to move to the desired hex during the current turn. Reminder, press the go to button in, to order the unit to remember the path you've set for, the, for it to follow until it arrives. Wow, I should edit that down. All right, using nobles and stacks. Nobles provide a stabilizing focal point amidst the chaos of wartime struggle. Because of this, they give any stack or retreat bonus to the combat. Use them judiciously, and that's really a morale bonus not to retreat. However, for if all your nobles are destroyed, your time as house leader is over. Use spaceships to travel from planet to planet with via jump gates. Select the desired vessel, then click on the planet to which you wish to travel. Doing so will cause a lighted path to appear along the jump gate route between your point of departure and your destination. To begin your journey, click again on the planet you want to go to or press the go to button. Time for a drink of water, I believe. <laughs> Jason says, from his expression, I would think the electron microscope alone did not cause his revelation. I think he had pharmaceutical help. <laughs> Only in certain states in the United States. Some of your spaceships can transport other units. To load units into a ship's cargo bay, one click on the unit to be loaded. Two, drag the chosen unit to the icon of the ship that will be carrying it to its new destination. To unload units from a ship, D, click on one click on the unit that you wish to have disembark to drag the chosen unit to the empty box or the icon of another vessel. Wessel, we got check off here. All right, units. The first units you see guard your embassy on planet Byzantium Secundus. It includes a noble, as you must have one on this planet to vote for regent and empire. Emperor, emperor, sorry, fixing some spelling issues. Byzantium Secundus. Let's spell it out, shall we? Not just Byzantium 2. All Lehalan units loyal to you appear with a purple background color. Purple background color. Purple background color. The entire stack is represented by one blinking unit on the star or planet map. Beep, 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 beep. The sidebar to your left shows each member of the stack. Sentry those units for now by L-clicking on the button that looks like a tent in the lower left-hand corner of the screen. All right, so they're all sentry. Now your view shifts to a farm on Kish. All right, kish the Kish. But instead of moving these units, I'll click on the star map button. The star map button is located just to the right of the planet map in the upper left corner of the screen and looks like a jump gate. Yay! You will now be on the star map screen. Woohoo! R click on the miniature star map. That's this. And you'll get the full view of the known world. Your current home world is Kish. Mwah. To view your starships orbiting Kish, I'll click on the planet Kish. There we go. Now R click on the purple icon representing your ships above the planet Kish. Let me do a quick edit there as well. Don't know why there are brackets. On the star map, the counter has the number six in the lower left, showing that there are a total of six units in the stack. On the sidebar, there are six counters. Each has a number in the upper right corner representing the number of move points that it has. Anywhere that the unit is shown, it has a green bar across the bottom of its counter that represents the unit's health, and as we all know, it does not stay green when they take damage. Our click on the stack, on the blinking unit on the star map, to view the star or stack information screen. We already are. We already did that. We are clicked on it, so we already got that up. All right, so we can do it again anyway. Beep! Oh! Cities in their stacks. The city icon is located on the bottom of the stack screen. It displays the loyalty of the city represented by a percentage number and the population and city represented by a color bar. The higher the percentage, the more loyal the city, the greater its production. Also, the closer the city is to its full population, the more productive it will be. Aha, and now we got the stack screen. Ah, stack info screen, that's right. Our click on each unit to get info. So we start with the cruiser. We see what a big, nasty thing it is. There's those frigates. Big combat difference there, wow. There you'll see what the unit looks like. This was top-notch 3D art for 1994, 95, let me tell you, 96. What its name is, as well as many other unit statistics that are covered in more detail outside of the tutorial. Find a frigate and remember what it looks like. Return to play by clicking on the exit button.
Uh, I should change this around. I should have us go up to the star map later and start by exploring Kish. Good, good to find out this stuff now while I'm still writing it up. All right, so anyway, explore Kish. Right click on the spinning planet below the word Kish. This is your home world where the deserts have been inexorably expanded since the fall of the Second Republic. You control most of the cities on it, but this loyal Lee Han and other rebel factions hold the rest. Other notable features include the Merchants League Agora, where you can buy the resource to expand your power. Near that is an Imperial Eye base. Let's find those. Ba -doo, ba -doo. Hey, there they are. Near that is an Imperial Eye base containing agents and troops of the Regency's Secret Service. In the chaos after Vladimir's assassination, your house knows little of what lurks outside your feast. You know ancient landmarks like cities and roads, but little of what goes on in those places. Not in those places. You have to explore to discover those, as well as any ruins or resource bonuses. Appreciate you all coming along while I edit out my own tutorial. Scroll around by R clicking on empty hexes. Woohoo! Or by clicking on different parts of the map in the upper left corner. But no, L clicking. I need to say L clicking. Right? L clicking. L clicking. L clicking. Sounds like a name. I am L clicking. To view the functions of all the buttons, right click on any button. Hey, see, that shows where all the buttons do. View the functions of all the buttons. Or I click on any button. That's not included. Considered a button because that's the function. Right. Return to the star map again by clicking on the star map button near the upper left corner of the planet. Boom! Explore the planet rampart. Or click on the planet rampart. There's rampart. It is to the lower left of Kish and connected by a jump route. But in the new dark ages, you have lost all knowledge of the planet. We lost our map to this planet long ago. We must send a ship there or buy the information from another party. You must move a ship to orbit or trade for information for the map information. Or click on your ship stack above Kish. Let's get back to Kish. Ba -doom. Select a frigate by de-clicking on one of the frigates in the sidebar. Ba -doom -ba -doom. This deselects all units but that frigate. Move the frigate to Rampart by L-clicking, Mr. L-clicking, on that planet icon. The jump route turns bright green. L-click a second time to cause the ship to enter the jump gate above Kish. And suddenly we get information on assault landers. Most spaceships can land any type of terrain other than water hexes, which do not accept any landing vessel. Should be 1L. Assault landers, unlike other landable spacecraft, suffer no damage from landing outside of cities. All right, so because it jumped, we lost focus on it. So I need to mention that in here. Jumping exhausts all of a ship's move points, so the other ships will automatically become the current group. However, now that ship is in orbit of Rampart, you may R click on it on Rampart, on the planet, to view the map. On the, not on it, not on the ship. On the planet, to view the map. All right, let's R click on Rampart. Rampart! Now we see what Rampart looks like. Now you know the location of roads and active cities. You must explore the planet to remove the fog of war. Return to space by clicking on the jump gate symbol. I'll be turning my head to the left when I do that. That's where I look at the chat. Scout. R click on Kish. All right, so you got to get back to Kish. R click on your factory. R click on your factory. Factory. Factories are cities which can be used to build a wide variety of units. All factories can produce military vehicles. Beyond that, there are other elements that determine what a factory can produce. One, factories. Bordering bodies of water can also produce naval units. See, that's not spelled with an E. Nothing about belly buttons. It's with an A. Two, some units which can be produced in your factories require an appropriate research, require appropriate research before they're available for production. To scroll through your available options, select the build button. Reminder, new unit options are immediately entered into the build screen upon completion of the appropriate research. All right. Uh, select one militia unit. Beep, beep, we've learned to select in a previous one. In a previous uh, method. 
part of the tutorial. Uh, select one militia unit and move it two units, two hexes north on the road next to the Imperial Eye Fort and the League Agora. I want to do this. Boom. Oh, it's seen something. Boom. Click in on the destination, confirm it. When the militia unit stops outside, inside of the Agora, inside of the Agora? Spots units inside of the Agora. Signaled by an audible unit spotted message, it stops and awaits new orders. Our set, restart the move by I'll click on the destination again. Right click on the Agora and right click on it again to view the stack. The League Agora. The Agora is an outpost of the Merchant League. To purchase from the League, select the Agora, click the trade button and choose from the available resources to sell to the League. You must move cargo to the Agora. And this is what's in the Agora. Yeah, that militia didn't spot most of those units, did it? There's a bit more troops in there. It holds a lot of valuable resources, cargo for you to buy. Exit the stack screen. Purchase cargo. The Agora should still be the active hex. The Agora should also appear on the sidebar. A button next to it says trade. Click on it and a menu appears. Woohoo, it did. Select the number of metal units to buy by using the slider bar. Notice the effect on your bank account. All right, let's what effect does that have on bank account. Oh my gosh, look at my bank account go up and down. This represents how you're able to buy less. Note that the metal is also sliding to the right. Oh, okay, okay, hold on. Notice the effect on your bank account. Select a second resource. Slide it to the right. Do -do 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 -do. Ah, we've changed some functionality. Notice that the metal is also sliding to the right. This represents how you are now able to buy less Metal. However, purchases do not take effect until you click the purchase button and exit the screen. Slide the second choice back to zero. We already did that. Gotta fix all this. Uh, slide the second choice back to zero and slide the metal until you get 100 metal. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, boom. 100. Uh, click on the purchase button. Purchase. A cargo pod appears next to the Agora and maybe under the militia. Or click on it. Move it back to your factory to protect it. Beep, beep. Back in you go. All right. And I guess we'll sentry it. Probably say sentry. You may also sell the league your own resource cargo pods, or you may attack the Agora, seizing the cargo by force with high casualties, causing the league to declare war and cease trading with you. We don't recommend that. Yeah, that's what the uh, what the tutorial used to call for. We don't do that now. All right, build unit. To produce a unit in any city, R click on the city to select it. The city will appear on the sidebar and a build button will appear next to it. L click on the build button. All cities produce basic garrison units and engineers. Advanced units are built in factories, forts, spaceports, and labs. Press the cancel button. R click on your factory. So we click in here, farm cities. Farm cities harvest the food required to keep the hungry masses from starving. If you do not produce enough food for your people every turn, your units and cities will begin to starve. The results of starving units are 1. Starving units in or out of cities lose health every turn. 2. These units lose faith in your causes as their bellies rumble and thus their loyalty begins to decrease. These problems can continue to mount until you 1. Begin producing enough food to feed your population. 2. Buy enough food from the League to feed your population. 3. Disband units and or raid cities until your food production is great enough to sustain your population. Four, wait until enough units have starved to death to allow your food consumption to support those who remain. Food is measured in food units. Fully staffed cities require 10 food units every turn. The max amount of food units produced by a farm city every turn will depend upon the following. One, location. Two, loyalty. Three, population of the city. Reminder, only one harvest city is allowed in a five hex radius, so choose locations of your farms wisely. All right, so now we've got this, and we do is have more information, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. All right, hey, there's an elite flak and an elite artillery in here. Pretty cool. All right, but we need to right-click on the city. Right-click on your family, on your family, on your factory. Don't right-click on your fa family, please. And L-click build. Click build on sidebar. Scroll through the list of options. 
Notice that each cost a different number of turns and resources to build. So let's scroll through. It does say let's scroll through. So, yep, there's the engineer. PTS missile launcher, lack the electronics, medium tank, tank killer, SPR anti air, SPR artillery, gunship, atmosphere fighter, dive bomber, strategic bomber, militia, anti aircraft, anti tank gun, artillery! Yay! Uh, but each unit also has a maintenance cost. You may pay that every turn one unit is built. One is built. Select a medium tank to build. All right, so back up to the medium tank. Medium tank. Click on the build button on the upper left corner. Still there. Confirm your choice. So we're building a medium tank. I should also talk about building an engineer. I might do that at the end of this. Maybe I should do it here. All right, engineer. Build engineer. What do you think, folks, on chat? Nobody likes to work on an empty stomach with an empty stomach. I don't I don't like to work with any body parts. I prefer to work with a computer. All right, um, folks in chat, if you've played the Lee Halan, we have these starting cities. I should probably put in about building an engineer. Where do you think I should tell them to build the engineer, or should I wait till we conquer a city to build an engineer? So put it in chat as I go into the combat part of the tutorial. Well, oh, one more thing. Raise taxes! Yes, indeed. After spending that money, you want to make sure you have enough funds for the next turn. Click on the house pull down from the menu bar. Um, notice that the budget area is located in the lower right. That's the budget area. The first row is how much your house makes from taxes per turn. There we go. The second is how much you skim, steal from the tithe. Lee Halan would never skim from the tithe that you're responsible for collecting from the church. The third row is how much your unit pay is per turn. The fourth row, debt, is how much you owe the league for any loans. None at this point. The fifth row, bank, is how much was in the bank when you entered the house status screen. The last row is what will be in the bank at the end of this turn, assuming everything stays the same. Move the slider bar on the first row, tax. Drag it slightly to the right to increase your revenues next turn. Let's just click a button. Do a little bit. The red heart indicates that the people in the city will not like this and their loyalty will decrease. Return the slider to the center of the bar, exit the screen. Not really in the center. Hmm. Combat. You already have a variety of weapons at your disposal. And as you, re as you research more, you will develop advanced combat options. Near the Kish North Pole. Kish North Pole. Above your own fort are two cities cloaked in the fog of war. There's my fort, and there are two cities above it. Go to your space armada and select the assault lander. I always, uh, Daniel Fisher says, I always like to make an engineer in the main cluster of cities to send northward for metal and gems. All right. That's what we'll give them the example for. Tell them to build an engineer. Uh, well, we're already doing the factory. Engineers in the church. Our engineer and shield is a good idea, actually. I always like building engineers in the church. We have the preceptors, which are a bit heretical, but it always implies that you've got preceptors working amongst your folks, even though we don't really talk about them in EFS. We talk about them in the Fading Suns books. Uh, all right. Uh, minerals are always handy, yes. So, Daniel and EBM, should we do it in the church or the shield? Let us know. And we'll make it part of the tutorial. But for now, go to your space armada and select an assault lander. The assault lander. An assault lander. Use the jump gauge symbol to bring up the star map. What? Oh yeah. Yeah, we did that. R click on the ships. R click on them again to bring up the stack screen. D click on one of the two landers. I think I gotta rework this. Yeah, I gotta rework this part. All right, got one of the landers. L click on the planet Kish. Choose land. This doesn't have the option to attack, so I don't need to do that. I can say land on your fort. All right, fixing that. Land on your fort. Oh, ow, I landed on my fort. R click on the fort to bring up the stack screen. Forts. Military units can be produced in forts. Some units which can be produced in your forts require appropriate research before they are available for production. One, select the build button to scroll through your options. Remember, new unit options are immediately entered in the build screen upon completion of the appropriate research. 
Lots of good stuff in here. Look at all those tasty, tasty units. Click and drag first an anti-tank unit and then an artillery. I guess I should say first an artillery and then an anti-tank gun. Nah, anti-tank gun first. And again, then an artillery into lander. Do not let up on the mouse button until the unit completely overlaps the lander icon. The units now appear to the lander's right, connected by a co coupling. Each... Let's fix that spelling here. Each has a plus marker on it now to show that it is cargo. Exit the stack screen. Using officers and stacks. Officers give any stack a retreat bonus in combat. This bonus is not, however, as effective as the one which nobles provide. A rocket icon. Double, uh, sorry. You click on the lander to select it. And it's cargo. A rocket icon appears highlighted on a button to the upper left corner of the screen. It's called the launch button. Launch button. I'll click. That's a period, not a comma, please. Let's fix that. I'll click on it to launch the ship into space. Boom. I'll click on Kish again to land. Select a hex north of one of the two northern cities. All right. So we will start here. Bonk. Would you like to unload all the share and transport ship cargo? Say yes. Bonk. Now go back to space button. Right click on the stack. Double click on your cruiser. Left click on Kish and attack. Bombard the farm. Actually, I should put in there you should scout. You should actually look in the farm before you bombard. Hmm. Just have you bombard till they're dead. But don't. And once more. Nope. The city has su suffered some damage. Actually, I should maybe talk about looking at what that means. I, I, oh, still 100% health. Never mind. It didn't take any damage from the cruiser. Single cruiser does not do much damage. All right. And the shield be more appropriate. Leon on faithfully being says. Daniel Fisher says church. Got to put the clergy to work. All right. Let's have one more person in the chat to vote. Shield or church for the way the engineer comes in. All right. So we don't have enough to attack. I guess I need to have both assault landers do this. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. All right. So change it so both assault landers come down and load up in the fort. Yeah, and maybe I take the off bird. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I'm going to have the use both assault landers to take troops. Both assault landers take the officer. I think that's a good plan. Alright, so let me act as if we've done that. So let's land you in the fort. Have it grab the officer. Let's say it grabs an officer and the militia to give uh, less likely for the um, officer to get killed if in close combat. I think that's a good idea. And that way they'll get to see their militia die in combat. You land. Same place. And I'll have them do this together in the tutorial. All right. So after the bombardment, now it is time for the stack to attack. So this will be... I'm going to have to change this because now you got a bigger a stack to attack. So let's go ahead and do that. And have them do it normal. Oh, I need to put in there if they retreat what you do. And they, I expect them to lose that militia. All right. So, yeah. Actually, I'll keep doing what I was doing because I'm going to show you what I have them do now. Hmm. Because I want to show them the bulk hauler as well. I have them load up the bulk hauler and uh, drop that on the farm after they've captured it. And then bring the stack on over to get the next place. All right. Interesting. I need to put in about retreating. I didn't think about that. Okay. Combat is done. You just captured the city. Hurrah. So the next part of the tutorial says go back into space. Get your bulk collar. Land that in the fort. Load up 
Two Wolfen and Two Smiter. Wolfen. Wolfen. Smiter. Smiter. Select that. To boom. Two space. And get in. The city you took. Now we need to talk about capturing. Move that unit to capture anyone if not a capture, just move it out towards the other city. And the idea was that they would come and almost be able to touch the city. Now they won't. That's interesting because I haven't scouted that city in the tutorial, but now they really can't. Hmm. I told them just leave those units, but now I need to tell them. I don't actually tell them to click the red button to leave those units on their salt lantern to fly out again next turn. So that's an important fix too. Leave stack on assault landers. All right. Da, 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 da. Diplomacy. You might want to make friends with someone now. On the diplomacy screen, making use of diplomacy. Diplomacy plays an important role in keeping relations with the other houses. From this screen, one, contracts can be made with other powers. Two, technology can be traded. Three, war can be declared. Four, political favor can be levied. Five, map information can be sold to the alien vow. Remember, be careful what you offer. You may find yourself regretting it later. All right, so this time we click on uh, those banners and diplomacy. Diplomacy often involves trade-offs. To promote your agenda, you will need to consider making an offer to other houses for things you want. Each of the following particulars can play a major part in the in helping or harming our chances for profitable negotiations. One, who you choose to ask. Two, how you ask them. Three, what you offer in exchange. To present your diplomatic exchanges, one, click on one of the give me bars to make a demand, up to three per house per turn. Two, click on one of the aisle bars to make an offer. Reminder, if you click on the and button, it will switch to uh, or, which will change the offers you can make in the aisle bars. All right. Notice that you do not know their budget conditions. Budget, question, question, question. You would be able to look at the budget for House of Thought if you were allied with them, but you are currently... Uh, but you are currently at the default status. Peace. Peace, peace, peace. Try to form an alliance, which in the future will be represented by a green wreath with the Hazat. Obviously, you only have an alliance with yourself. Diplomacy protocols are constructed in the contract area on the upper right of the diplomacy screen. Click on the top line just beneath Give Me. A menu will appear. Select an alliance with you. Return to the diplomacy screen. Click on the first line beneath And, and a menu will appear. Select Give You Technology. Give You Technology. Select Hospitals. And then choose. The And button can be toggled to OR, which brings up a threat menu, but you really don't have the muscle to threaten anyone yet. To send the contract, click on the DONE button on the lower right of the screen. Capitalize DONE here. On the DINE button. Mmm, I'm apparently getting hungry. If you make a mistake on the contract and wish to change it, click on the clear button and start over. Exit the diplomacy screen. Alright, so DONE Message sent. and exit. Alright. Now, let's see what we see in chat here. All right, shield from Jason. Shield from Imperial Imperial Autism 11. I'd vote for this year personally. Maybe do troop recruitment tutorial from the church. Oh, that'd be interesting. We do the factory doing, but you're right, we do more. All right, but shield, we want to have them. Shield cities. Shield cities draw on the energy at the core of a planet to produce a powerful dome of energy. Any city adjacent to the shield city will be under its dome. The energy dome protects all cities under it from orbital bombardment. Reminder, only one shield city is allowed on a planet. Otherwise, you really risk uh, environmental havoc. Well, you can't do it all because there's only so much energy at the center of the planet. Just like the center of a Milky Way. All right, so we're going to build an engineer here. So we'll tell them about building engineers. If you want to produce an engineer, yes. All right. Okay. Build city. Select the engineer in the palace. Palace cities. Palaces are the capital cities of each planet. If you control the palace, the planet is considered under your control. If you place a noble or officer in the palace, you may collect taxes from the planet's citizens. Reminder, only one palace is allowed per planet. Okay. 
Engineers! Your success as an empire builder is based upon more than battle strategy. Engineers build cities and raise them, as well as roads. Don't underestimate their value to your campaign. To use them, one, select engineer, two, select build from the orders menu, or press the B key. Reminder, engineers are expensive, so use them wisely. All right. Select the engineer in the palace. Move him to an empty hex, preferably the desert one that is surrounded by the pulsing blue light. So, that one. The blue lines represent areas covered by the shield generator. Shields make it impossible for a spaceship to bombard any cities outside its areas of effect. Inside its areas of effect. Click on the orders pull down. So we move to there. Click on the orders pull down. And then click on build city. Click on the lab. Becomes highlighted with a white box. All right, city construction. Building city should be a thoughtful work. Any engineer worth his salt, his or her, worth their salt, any engineers worth their salt will tell you that some locations are more fit for certain types of cities than others. For example, it makes little sense to construct an oil well where there isn't any oil in the ground. Before starting construction on a city, tell your engineer... Let your engineer report back to you about the natural potential of your proposed location to do this. 1. Move an engineer to the respective site. 2. Access the build city screen and check the projected production of any given city for that location. Reminder, you cannot build a harvesting city or borium farm, mine, or well within five hexes of another harvesting city. All right, so can't build any harvesting cities here. Hey, do 29 energy based on being in the desert. Great for um, uh, solar generators and wind farms. It's not just oil here. Thank you very much. But we're going to do a lab. Click on the lab, click on build, then confirm. The engineer will be consumed. Consumed. And a lab will be produced. Yes, we want to produce a lab. All right. Skipping units. That is all you want to do this turn. I probably should change that and let them do more. With skipping units, we should go to this. And this, that's what I'll do. I'll have them skip units now. Click on the double red arrows at the lower left corner to cycle through a unit. Eventually, the second Byzantium will appear. No, it won't. I centered them. All right, and then they'll just go ahead and end turn. So they actually want me to cycle through, and so let's actually do that. You've moved all your units. You wish to end your turn now. We need to say that. Yes. How's We need to talk about the fact that you'll get. All right, first. Turn to research. Your research for Electron Micro should be complete. Collect, select Cyclotron. Cyclotron. Why didn't I get... Oh! I've got a new lab. Oh, I forgot to... I need to put that in the build. When you build that second lab, put it to work immediately, because right now it's not working. That's what I don't have in here. Have second lab also research electron microscope. Thanks for helping me uh, walk through this and figure out what I'm missing from the tutorial. All right, so we'll research that and then we will get cyclotron. Research of electron microscope being completed. Now we research cyclotron. Okay, he rejected the terms. You bum, you need a hospital as it is. You want microbiology for 810. All right. So I think we're kind of done with the tutorial. Spaceships with range space attack capabilities can bombard cities. Units or cities from space. One, select the attacking spaceship. Two, select the planet the orbiting spaceship is orbiting. Press the attack button. Select the specific hex you wish to bombard. Okay. All right. Uh, 249... Always helps to have an audience. It really does. I've really gotten to like play testing with an audience. So it's funny because back in the early days of Dev for Me, you really wanted to keep development really under wraps until you were about ready to launch. You didn't want anyone to see it because it's one of the things that happened early on was people saw early versions of the games were problematic. And they talked about it, and that just shaped everyone's thoughts of the game, even if it came out perfect when it launched. So, 
In the past, the idea was you only had one chance to launch, do it right, don't show it before then, except to really select folks who would understand. There are still a lot of folks who hold that view, you especially see that with console titles. But uh, it's so many devs now like to live stream their development, their testing, etc. I'm definitely in that camp now. Because the game is fluctuating, people get to see it through the stream, and getting, I think, pulling back the curtain on the dev and testing process is invaluable for people who are going to play the game and makes them enjoy it even more. So, plus, I really appreciate the feedback I get during uh, this process. It really worked well with uh, the Noble Armada game, and uh, I've really enjoyed it live streaming Emperor of the Fading Suns during the development of this patch. So, you all saw the tutorial. Are there areas that I'm missing in it you think we should talk about? For instance, we didn't get into what every planet does. I didn't talk about these resource icons. Um, I didn't... Uh, have you click on mines to give it the mine cities mine cities mine cities these are mine cities mine cities harvest the raw materials required for advanced resources mines will produce any combination the following one metal two trace three gems depending on their location reminder only one harvested city without five hex radius etc etc so yeah we didn't talk about raw materials and resources this hex contains the resource bonus build the appropriate resource gathering city within two hexes of the bonus icon and receive additional resource units uh, yeah, we left all of that out. Didn't talk about ruins at all. Of course, with the Lihalan, you don't start seeing any ruins. So that takes a minute to get to the ruins. Usually the first... Actually, maybe I should do that. Hold on a sec. Let me think about this. If I send out the scout tank and have it drive along this road, uh, we don't get close enough to the ruin. There's a ruin down here. But on turn two, we could do that. All right, let me think about that. Send out scout tanks. Send out scout tank. Because that way we could talk about ruins. Hmm. Maybe talk about the church and the relationship with them. It's a pretty unique part of the game. That's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah, especially with sex. Ah, you're a, that's a great point. Let me go back to diplomacy. And uh, get that in there. That's a great idea. Church diplomacy and sex. That really does need to be talked about. Talking about the sex functionality is a good idea since it works. All right, EBM. Yeah, and that you can change your palace. That's a good point. Let me see something. Maybe we should do that when we click on the church. Cathedral cities. The cathedral determines the sect of a planet, male or female. If you change the sect of the cathedral, the loyalty of the units will be affected. Only one cathedral is allowed per planet. Yeah, so I guess we should talk about this. In a tutorial, what do you all think? In the tutorial, should I have him change the sect? What do you feel? Probably need to go back and nerf Brother Battle some more. You who are testing it, let us know if you think we need to nerf the Brother Battle some more. That is a pretty good one to change to. Um, yeah, yeah, talking about church diplomacy and sects. And that's actually a good reason to build the engineer in the church so that whole pop-up will show up. Yeah, I love the idea. Build your engineer in the church at the same time you're building a lab next to it. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, but that is antithetical to what the Lihalan are, and we're trying to be kind of true to the Lihalan. Hmm. Good question, good question. I will... I will ponder upon that. And figure that out. Indeed, indeed. All right, anything else y'all think we're missing? We're at 2.54. My, I did do even more talking and reading during this one than usual, so my throat's a little tired, so I'm only going to go till 3 today with the live stream. I don't think you want me to play a tutorial without saying any words to anybody. Brother Battle are extremely good for combat. They don't really have much downside to the balance that power. 
<laughs> Good point, EBM. Good point, EBM. I still need to nerf the brother battle. <coughs> oh, yeah. As soon as I talk about talking too much, I start coughing too much. Hmm. Was there anything I should have had folks do on Byzantium Secundus in the tutorial? This is Byzantium Secundus, capital of the human space. You must maintain a noble planet to be eligible for any office. No. You really can't see much about Biz 2 at this point in the game. Yeah, I think the League stuff was already pretty well done. People can explore that on their own pretty well. Yeah, I think you're right. Church diplomacy and sex does need to be added in. Um... Well, I think that's a pretty complete tutorial. I don't think there's any early game functionality that's not covered. Nothing in the file we need to talk about. Orders are pretty well covered. Messages, I'm not going to bother him about that in the tutorial. You already found the archives. Should we talk about the group finder and... Nah, people can, find, can explore this on their own well enough. Next, next, next. And most people do, I think. Where are my folks dying? Wait a minute, what's this? Oh, these were the ones we just captured, of course. Doi da doi da doi. Doi da doi da doi. Do that, uh... Video info. Yeah. I don't think there's any... I don't think any of that needs to be really gone into. This is pretty well clear. Diplomacy's clear. Byzantium Secundus. Doesn't really matter until the Regency screen. Should I at least have them click on it? What? They click on it, they get this pop-up, and that's pretty clear in itself. This current screen represents the current political... This screen represents the current political structure. One, if a house leader becomes a regent, that house's banner will hang at the imperial regent position. Ministry holders hang their banners at specified positions below the regent's banner. Ministries come with more than fancy trappings. To learn more about their benefits, their responsibilities, right-click on their banners. Imperial fleet. Commander of the imperial fleet. The imperial fleet commander guards the jump gates in their respective jump routes through space. To facilitate, facilitate this, the commander controls one, a large fleet of highly advanced ships. What about all the stuff on B2? I thought we talked about that. Oh, well. You also have a very useful... Uh, Resource construction on Byzantium Secundus. Imperial Eye. The Imperial Eye, as the name implies, is responsible for watching what the houses are doing. Just to promote the best interests of the Empire, mind you, and not at the request of any AI. To this end, the minister is placed in charge of one, a fort and small garrison, including spies on Byzantium Secundus, two forts similarly equipped on the homeworlds of each planet. Uh, okay. Uh, does the two... Maybe a Diplo nerf for Brother Battle. Do you folks really want to talk to you if you're interested in fighting everyone? Okay. Maybe do a knock down their other stats. EBM. Does the tutorial mention Byzantium is a kind of special status in the city that can't be built on them? No, it doesn't. That's a good point. You cannot build on B2. Stigmata. Commander of the Stigmata Garrison. The Stigmata Garrison Command brings with it the heavy responsibility of guarding the known worlds against the ever-present threat of the symbiote hordes. To combat these alien nightmares, this important command is provided with the following. One, garrison commanders control substantial forces on the planet Stigmata. Two, production facilities on Stigmata are also controlled by the commander. Three, a small fleet of ships completes the Stigmata garrison's retinue. The house buttons, ministers and non-minister nobles alike, need to be able to participate in diplomatic exchanges. To access your own house screen, press your house button. To access the diplomacy screen for any other house button, Press this corresponding house button. Interesting, interesting. Yeah. Nope, you're right. I talk um, early on in the tutorial about the importance of B2, but I don't talk about the limitations, so you're right. Need to include that. Alright, B2 limits. B2. All right, anything else folks can think about that we should include in the tutorial? That's been very helpful. We are now at 2.59. I've enjoyed this. Always valuable to stream, get feedback, and uh, present this to folks. Thanks for joining us.
and i um, looking forward to um, to the next stream probably again next Saturday although I will announce that in the proper channel soon alright thanks to everyone for joining great stream lots of useful information I hope those of you just playing the game for the first time find this tutorial helpful uh, can't think of anything else at the moment since he's DM. Alright, with that, thanks to everybody for joining, everyone for watching, and uh, enjoy more EFS. <laughs>